Hi, my name's Darren Mostyn and welcome to another Killer Tip session. In this one, we're going to be looking at stills. So stills are stored in the gallery section over here. A still is basically a snapshot of a scene, if you like. It's the, it contains the node structure that you've used to build up a particular grade. So we've got three here. Let's just grab another one. If I right hand click in this window here and say grab still, we've now got a snapshot of this particular grade. So all these nodes here are now sitting inside that still. So we could now use this still to apply a grade to an ungraded shot. So for example, here we have the same shot. Instead of me regrading it, I can literally just grab this still here and drop it on and all the nodes come across. And if I just undo that, the other way you could do that is just right hand click and say apply grade. And if I undo that again, the other way is just literally middle mouse click on that still. So it's three different ways of applying the grade. So any of those three methods will always copy the entire grade across. I'm going to add another serial node here and I'm going to come down here, just adjust the temperature a little bit. Let's just warm the shot up a little bit. And I'm going to go to my sizing tool and I'm just going to do a little punch in and move that across a little bit. So let's label that node, right hand click, node label, let's call it warm. And I'm going to save that by right clicking in here and grabbing still. So there it is, that's shot 15 saved. Now I want to copy the extra node that we just created onto shot seven. So let's click on here. I'm going to right click the still that we just made and say display node graph. And what you get now is a graph of all the nodes inside that still. So if I middle mouse click, you can move around here. You can also adjust the size here. And there is the warm node that we just made. And I'm going to literally drag that one node and drop it onto shot seven. So if I drop it here, you'll see a little plus sign. If I let go there, it automatically connects. So this node graph allows me to take specific nodes across to other scenes. Now, we also did a resize in there. Resizing is not attached to a node. So I can't select one of these nodes and simply copy across that resize that we did. Resizing is on the scene. It's not part of a node. So what we can do is click on the clip information here and we have here apply color. So that's all the color information, but we also have apply PTZR, pan, tilt, zoom, rotate. So that is the resizing information. So if I press on here, you see we get a nice little resize now copied from scene 15. You also have access to any timeline nodes that you've got. And clicking on node again, we can actually choose what will be applied when we copy that grade. So we could say, for example, don't take the tracking information. So if I deselect these, and we then apply the color, it will copy all the information across, but not the tracking. So the node graph is a really useful way of just copying specific information from one shot to another. So the stills are being saved to a directory in my preferences. So we go to preferences. The top line here is the folder that the stills are being saved in. There's a gallery stills folder in this path and they're not very big. So when you save a still, it goes to the gallery and it goes into either a stills album or a power grade album. These work pretty much the same, but there's a couple of slight differences. So in my stills, I can double click, for example, and that allows me to just preview that look. So this helps me with balancing. Or I can go to a shot here and middle mouse click as we saw earlier and literally apply that grade. So let's get rid of that wipe. And there's our grade applied. I can do that in the power grade as well. However, in power grade, when you double click, it doesn't give you a preview in the viewer. What it does is append that node. So, the, so whatever's in that node goes onto the end of your node tree. And that includes multiple nodes as well. So what I've done is create um, one node items. So if I just open this up and say display node graph, you see that each of these just contains one single node. And this one, for example, has sharpen and it's sharpened to level 46. Now, if I want to apply sharpening to any of my scenes, all I've got to do is double click and it literally appends on to my scene. So it's a really quick way of just adding sharpen vignettes, noise reduction, for example. So I'll quickly show you how to make one of those. If you go into the edit page, grab a, just a text from the title tool here. Just grab a piece of text, add the text that you want to put in there. So let's make a sharp 44. Okay. Now to see this in the color page, you need to right click and say new compound clip or else it won't show up in my timeline. Go to my color page. There it is on the end. Now what I need to do is add sharpen and let's make that a value of 44. Okay. Now what I do is grab that still 
and I've now got a title with a sharpening of 44 embedded in that still. So if now if I want to apply that, I just double click it and it goes on to the end of any scene that I want. So I just want to say hi to my good friend Mark Wiledge, who I'm sure a lot of you know from forums, as this was actually his idea. So we've looked at the difference between stills and power grade. There's actually a third section, which is called timeline. And what this is doing is looking at all the timelines in your project. So you can load up any timeline and all the stills from the timeline are displayed permanently. So I can copy grades from one timeline to another timeline really easily. So I can take this shot here and we can grab a grade from any other timeline and we can just simply middle mouse click and apply that. So back in our stills folder, the naming convention for these stills is a little bit unusual. This one here, for example, 1.7.1, .1, that means the first one is video level one. So it's video channel one. Seven is the seventh shot on that timeline. And point one at the end is it's the first version. So if we make multiple versions of a, of a scene, you'll get point two, point three, point four, etc. If I go to that shot number seven and grab a still, you see that we get one, so on video level one, number seven, point two. It's the second grade of that. It's the second version of that grade. So you can start saving versions. If you don't want to save multiple stills for each scene, you can override that in the main menu. So if you right click here, you can say one still per scene. And that way it will overwrite the last one. So if I now grab a still, you'll see that we've only got one for that scene. So it's the latest one. It's also worth noting that at the bottom here, you can choose what is included in the grade copying. So for example, you might want to preserve the input sizing of the original shot. You can also customize the naming of the stills. So if you go to the settings, click on general options, and if we tick here, we can label the gallery stills using either clip name, timeline time code, or down the bottom, it says custom label using tags. And if I type a percentage in here, you then get access to all your metadata. So we could have in here the clip name, for example, and we're gonna append the regular still number as well. So you'll still see the still number. Say save, and let's right hand click here, grab the still. So I now get the clip name and the still number. Okay, so this is a real killer tip now for using stills. I'm gonna create a stills album, and I'm gonna call it for correction. Now, if we go into shot 15, we applied this grade using our stills album earlier. And if we have a look here at the power windows, when I play the clip through, you'll see that the tracking information didn't come across. So we need to work on this shot, but I wanna do it a bit later. So just where the tracking information goes here, I'm gonna grab a still, and that's now saved in my correction folder. Okay, then we can click anywhere we like. And if I want to go back to exactly where that point was, if we right click this still and go to properties, you'll see that in here, it's grabbed the recording time code and the source time code. So what we can do is right click and say match reference white frame, and it jumps to exactly the frame that we grabbed the still at. So this is a really useful way of just time stamping with icons, areas that need fixing. You might have a little um, a glitch or something you want to remove, just grab a still of it, and then you can go back later and find them all. And once I've repaired it, I basically delete the still. So right click, delete selected. So finally, let's talk about reference stills. When you're starting a grade, you may have a reference point that you want to work to. That could be a, an image from the internet. It might be a JPEG that your client sent to you. And to import that, if you right hand click in the gray area and you just say import, and then you want to look at the reference. Now these are JPEGs, but I can't actually grab them. And the reason for that is by default, Resolve's looking for DPX files. So click on the options down here Scroll down, say all files. Okay, and now I can bring this in. And this is a still that a client gave me for a reference for a look that we were working on. So if your client's referencing a look from a particular film, just go on the web, download one of the images and just import it. You've then got a nice reference to work to. So if you've enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, any comments that go in, I always answer all the comments. And the more subscribers I get, the more I'll keep doing these. So hit the notifications as well. Check out my Facebook page, which is Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve. I'm Darren Mostyn. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.